So today, uh, we're going to be further developing the topic from yesterday uh, and discussing very specifically how we uh, at the FrameNet project uh, ended up using the tools that we have in FrameNet, the software tools and the intellectual tools, in order to execute the principles that we were talking about yesterday about how to analyze constructions. Uh, and uh, because there is an engineering component to this effort, uh, it's not, a, it doesn't contain absolutely everything that I would want to see in the Constructicon. However, uh, it is the best that is out there. There is no other Constructicon, ours is the only one. And hopefully we'll actually get funded to do more annotation in it. But right now, the project is inactive. We have the tools to do it. We have the know-how to do it. But we don't have the funding to do it. So uh, that's annoying. Um, but uh, the good news, the very good news, is that the FrameNet desktop software that we have given you here which will be ready for people to use very soon, it has the capability to annotate constructions in the same way that we were in Berkeley. So you guys do have funding, and so you will be able to make a Brazilian uh, Constructicon. And we're all really excited about that, actually, in Berkeley, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, we, we like to see uh, people doing analysis of language anywhere. Um, I will tell you very specifically that Chuck is very excited, uh, and he's really sorry that he couldn't be here. Um, <clears throat> so um, the order for the class today is going to be, uh, first, I'm going to sort of present how we can use a sort of labeling system, the same kind of labeling system that we have for FrameNet to do the kind of work that we want for the Constructicon. Uh, then uh, I'm going to present some examples of analyses that we have actually made uh, in uh, the Constructicon project, uh, and uh, also uh, let you guys know that there is a website that you can go to and look at all of the material from the Constructicon. Uh, I thought that you guys already knew that, but apparently uh, that website is not widely publicized. Um, so um, you guys will be able to look at that and see everything that we had done. Um, then after going through those analyses, probably after the break, I'm going to expect you guys to come up with some Brazilian examples for us to analyze. And I think that will take the rest of our time very easily. Uh, so uh, that's today's class. So the first thing to, that we need to do is I, I need to introduce a couple of terms, a couple of concepts related to constructional annotation. So yesterday, when we were talking about easy, We discussed a whole bunch of stuff that was happening in the neighborhood of easy, right? And specifically, we said that there was a construction that had to do with an adjective of a particular type, possibly two types, and that this uh, adjective had related to it a huge number of other facts. You know, the valence was complex in a particular way. Um, what I can tell you is that the, the main things that you, that you don't have from the FrameNet perspective for analyzing an adjective like easy, the main things that you want the Constructicon to give you are how you put together the pieces, how you actually make them into a linear sequence of things, because that's the only way that spoken language works. Um, so first of all, uh, just noting that we have two different constructions that this adjective occurs in in a very basic sense. There's either the predicative or the attributive use, right? So we need something, oops, 
that builds a structure that looks like this. Okay? This is a really, really straightforward construction. It's one that you learn uh, immediately in syntax. Um, but we need that. So just to describe in detail how we think of how this works, this adjective, if it's going to participate in this structure, has to have in its valence, so there's a valence, and in the valence, there's a list of things. Well, I'll stick to uh, Berkeley construction grammar and call it a set of things. Um, and among them, there has to be something that has grammatical function head. And whatever that thing that has grammatical function head, it has some kind of semantics, which whatever it is, the symbol indicates that whatever it is, it's the same as the semantics of this part. Okay? So this is a way to be very, 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 very formal about what this means. So there's one element of the valence here for the minimal adjective all by itself. And what it calls for is some grammatical function head. It probably also says that the phrase type should be a noun. And it says that the semantics are as specified, and this is going to be integrated into the easy adjective and its meaning. So separately, this whole thing, right? So this is just the valence feature. It also has a semantics. What is that semantics? Well, it's the frame of the adjective, right? And in that frame, let's just say it's actually the adjective easy. Uh, then, gosh, I forgot the name of the frame. Uh, difficulty, I think. So there's a difficulty frame. And then there are frame elements. And one of them is agent. Well, that's the wrong one. One of them was experiencer, yeah. Yeah. So what you actually need is an uh, activity, and then you need experiencer. And you also, for this valence, you also need This is really terrible, but this is uh, as simple as you can make it, believe it or not. So, okay. Um, what you know next is that there's another valent, which it has to be an infinitive. And specifically, it's an infinitive that has in its valence an external. And what you know about that external is that it is actually the thing that has the same semantics as this noun. Okay, so if I say uh, an, an easy man to please, then the man is the one, uh, oh, whoops, no, that's wrong. Uh, I keep forgetting to do, how to do that. Uh, as I said yesterday, the element that this actually fills is the topic. So, slightly less complicated. You separately have to worry about the subject of that guy, but let's not even worry about that right now. So the topic 
of this uh, phrase is specified as the semantics of this noun. So if a man is easy to please, then a man is the topic of this pleasing event, right? Does that make some kind of sense? Anyway, this is a way to be extremely, extremely formal about how this stuff works. You separate things into the parts which are variable and are going to interact with other constructions. Those go in the valence. And the parts which are fixed. Now, in the case of the easy construction, there isn't anything there in the valence which is fixed. Right? So there's nothing which has to be in a particular order, doesn't interact with fronting, doesn't interact with passivization, doesn't interact with etc. Right? So everything for this construction should be in the valence. And in fact, that's the case for most constructions. Most constructions, mostly, are going to just give instructions to other constructions about how to put things together. Today we're going to uh, talk about some constructions that aren't like that, thank goodness, because they're actually simpler uh, for the parts that you just put together uh, from pieces. So, just to give you an idea about uh, those constructions, if I say 21 miles per hour, the pieces are not movable, right? The number has to go here, miles has to go here, the per has to go here, and the time unit has to go here. Boom. So we can generalize a little bit, but the order is fixed, and the semantics of each piece, they make the same contribution every time. It doesn't interact with passivization. You can't topicalize one piece of this, nothing like that. So this is what we call a real construction. This whole thing here forms a phrase, which you can call the rate construction. Okay, but this has to be describing something too, right? So something is traveling at 21, 21 miles per hour or something like that, right? There's some, it, this is like an adjective, right? It's, it's a, like a very special way of saying fast or slow, depending on the context. Um, so the rate construction still has a frame element that's not filled, right? It has, each of these elements has a semantic contribution, but there's still another element that you need. And that element we would put in the valence. As with adjectives, there's actually a variation between whether you have grammatical function head with phrase type n or whether you have uh, an external a subject, which is a phrase type noun phrase, right? So that's expected. We know that that variation is out there. So that's not too surprising. But the important point is that even though we have these fixed elements, we also have this other element that will interact with the predicative construction and the attributive construction. So how does that work? Well, just to be really clear, it works like this. Without the extra stuff about the extra frame elements, all it says is that there is a grammatical function head and it has a phrase type n, semantics 1, and whatever has this specification, this construction here, which is the attributive modification construction,
the attributed modification construction is going to say whatever the base adjective here has as its head, it's going to find it here in this phrasal position. So once you have actually chosen that you want the attributive modification construction, that's not going to interact further with other constructions. Right? Once you have chosen that, then the order is fixed, etc. But at the level of the, the root or the level of the rate construction, you still don't know what further combinations are going to happen, right? So this is what I mean when you, what I meant yesterday, when you generalize. You try to subtract out the parts which are variable and attribute that variability to something else. And the parts which are fixed, you attribute to the construction itself. Okay? In general, the important thing to note is that you have construct internal elements and construct external elements. Everything we have done in FrameNet is construct external elements. And when we do construction annotation, that part will look identical to the FrameNet annotation, right? So after you've put together 21 miles per hour, then the external argument works just like you expect external arguments to work. It appears either as a noun that this thing is modifying, or it appears as the external in all the different possible structures that an external of an adjective can appear. Okay? So that, this part is the part which is like FrameNet. This part is not. So we can be a little bit more specific uh, about this construction and say that, well, these parts aren't all quite the same either, right? So each of these parts, the 21, the miles, and the hour, each of those contributes uh, semantics, right? They each fill what looks just like a frame element to anybody who does frame net. We have renamed them construction elements, but in terms of the use, in terms of the meaning, it's just the same. So when you see a construction element, in terms of what it means for the meaning, it's the same as a frame element. The only difference is that there's, for the construct internal elements, the form is also fixed. So they actually are, the constructions are picking constructions to be their pieces, which have some specification both in form and in meaning. So each of these are construction elements, but we can see that this element is kind of privileged in a way, right? It's like a lexical unit, and then it seems to be the thing that gives us the idea that we have some kind of rate going on. So this is what we call a construction evoking element. which in all of the software is abbreviated CEE. -E. Okay? That's important to note because we're going to be looking at screenshots in a little bit. Okay? So we have construction internal elements that are called construction elements. We have the construction evoking element, which is internal, obligatorily. And then you have these extra construct elements, and those you also call construction elements, although I thought we should just call them FEs. But just for simplicity, we just called them construction elements. Uh, the one other thing that we need is we need a mark to indicate what is the construct. You know, how big is the chunk? that this construct actually covers. What part is fixed? So for indicating this whole gestalt here, but not this part, or not its realization anyway, this gets what we call the construction phrase type. 
This will then let you know like how this thing is going to fit into the more general grammar of the language. So if this thing effectively produces a very complicated adjective, which it does, then that will tell you something about where you can use it. Because other constructions are going to say, I want an adjective. I'm going to tell you where its external is. Or, I want an adjective. I'm going to tell you where its head is, as we were saying over here. OK? Tiago. Uh, in regards to the construction evoking element, mm -hmm. does it necessarily uh, have to be lexically specified? Or can it be categorially specified? Uh, it doesn't even have to exist. Mm -hmm. So uh, some constructions have no construction evoking element at all. So things like uh, if I take uh, the construction uh, right node raising, which we call shared completion, or if I take gapping or stripping or any of these extremely general constructions like this, there's no construction evoking element. The only way you can identify them is by the gestalt of all the, the construct internal elements. Mm -hmm. I see, but uh, would it be possible to uh, posit the existence of a categorically specified construction evoking element? Yep, we don't place any limits on it. Mm -hmm. um, so in fact, uh, you know, it might be as specific as a word or it could be a class of words, specifically lexically specified, or it could be a semantically specified class. Uh, and uh, if we've done our job right, then we actually will tell you in the prose description of the construction which of those things is true. But just looking at the annotation, you won't know what we think is the case. So this, this annotation here is just going to have a CEE tag on this piece. And that's not going to tell you whether or not it has to be that. Mm -hmm. um, related to this fact is, of course, the fact that you can abbreviate this as MPH mm -hmm. in English. And so then you want some way of talking about the fact that, well, MPH is also an evoker of this construction, but it also incorporates some of the other information, right? So it says what the uh, numerator and what the denominator are. Um, and, you know, that's all fine as far as we're concerned. Okay? Um, so I'm going to pause for a moment and just ask whether people have any questions about what is on the board because the board's going to get erased pretty soon. Okay. I'm going to ask a question to see whether we are all on board in the same way. So uh, could you pass the microphone, uh, let us say, to this side in front, as far as, yeah. Yeah. So the question is, um, in, in construction terms, in the Constructicon terms, is there a construction evoking element in fra for the lexical annotation in FrameNet? If so, what is it? Again, in Constructicon terms, uh, what are the frame elements? And in Constructicon terms, uh, what are things like support verbs? The last one will require some thought. So do you have any ideas? about the construction evoking element, mm -hmm. I think it has, uh, construction needs, uh, I, I don't know if always needs a construction evoking element. Mm -hmm. And what was the? So the question is, um, so just to, just to be clear, the frame, the frame net annotation is construction annotation. It's just it's a very specific kind of construction annotation, one which we have optimized for annotating lexical constructions. So my question is, 
is there a construction evoking element? I said it was optional, right? Not everything has a construction evoking element. But in the case of lexical constructions that we have in FrameNet, is there a construction evoking element? And if so, what is it? I think I, I can't answer that. Uh, so come up with an example for something we could annotate FrameNet style. Just give me a sentence. Something very simple. One of the sentence that I bring. Uh-huh, okay. go for it. Portuguese? I don't care, that's good. Messi foi o cara do Barça na Champions League. Okay. Messi was the man of Barça at Champions League. Okay. He was the man? Yes. Yeah, it, it means that he was uh, the most important okay. player since he's a player. Okay, got okay, it. In this case. Yeah, that makes sense in English too. I just was surprised that you could do it in Portuguese also. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, so uh, let's uh, choose something that we would annotate in FrameNet. So I'm going to leave aside what is probably the uh, intended uh, use of this sentence until later. But let's just say that uh, I was trying to annotate league. So what, what would I do if I was annotating league? Well, I'd have league. And uh, champion is probably, uh, or championship? Champion League? Yeah. Champion League is the name of the championship. Yeah. Okay, so you have this. This is pretty clearly a frame element. Uh, now remember that frame elements, we are calling construction elements, right? So we're just saying that this is a specific, specific type of construction. And... In terms of Constructicon, this is a construction element, right? No difference. What is this in terms of Constructicon? Of the things that I have up here. Key. Would it be the element evoking the, I mean, the construction evoking the element? Yeah, the construction evoking element, that's exactly right. So this is... Uh, from the point of view of lexical annotation, it's called the target. And here it's called the CEE. Um, it is also something else. Uh, so can you pass the microphone to somebody else? So what, what else is it? So it is the construction evoking element. Absolutely, 100%. Totally good. But it's also, there's another thing up here that it is. Seria. Would it be <clears throat> would it be the core frame? Would it be the core? It would be the head, but we don't have a head up here as a, a piece of our construction annotation. So uh, just to, to make it really clear, you have construction elements. We said that this is one of those. And I think league is filling a frame element, right? So it's also, it's both a construction evoking element and a construction element. That's fine. Um, that is, wasn't what I was actually asking. Um, but then we have one more thing. This is what I was trying to get you to say. So it is also the entire construct. Because the only element which is fixed is this part. Only the word. Everything else is variable. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, so that is true for everything we do with lexical constructions. For every lexical construction, the target is both the construction evoking element and it is the full construct. Okay? For constructions, we had to change things exactly because for non-lexical constructions or for weirdo lexical constructions, that's not true. Okay? 
So everything we're doing, everything we're elaborating is because of that. Okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Do I need anything else before we go on? I don't think we do, except... Um, is, it, is anyone out there familiar with any of the construction literature mentioning the uh, let alone construction? So one thing to, to say, uh, since nobody's jumping out of their seat to explain the let alone construction, um, one thing that you can say about the English construction let alone is that it requires a negative context. So, in advance, and the construct internal elements, and the construct evoking elements, we also have a licensing condition. And so that licensing condition, we have a separate mark for. And uh, we'll be seeing that in just a moment. Okay? So that is all the elements. Now I'm going to switch over to the projector for a minute. Assuming it works. Oh, do you... Do, where's the... Uh, uh, here's Michael, the, yeah. while you are getting things set, okay. could you just uh, tell people oh. that for constructions, we can have both the construction element and the frame element? For frame evoking yeah. constructions in the annotation, or I'm going to show that to them. Say again? Uh, because when you, you paralleled lexicographic annotation with constructional mm -hmm. annotation, and you said, you know, what is an FE in lexicography is a CE in the construction, mm -hmm. constructicon. Mm -hmm. uh, just to get it clear that in the constructicon, you can also have frame elements, because some constructions evoke. We call them CEs in that case. I think that's really? unfortunate. Well, but you can add the layer frame element for a construction. Mm, but the the we we end up calling them CEs. So they're they're the both the internal ones and the extern the construct internal ones. Sorry, the both the construct internal ones and the construct external ones. We have given the same label, which was considered simplification, but I didn't consider it simpler. Okay, then, um, because the, the thing is, when you have a frame evoking construction, mm -hmm. uh, so you do have to describe a frame, mm -hmm. and it's different to describe the construction elements mm -hmm. and the frame elements they evoke. So it's two different yeah, pieces of information. Yeah, correct? so, so let, let us just say that anytime you see CE, constru construction element, that you should insert a word before it. Construction internal element, which is what you're calling CE, uh -huh. and construction external element, which is what you're calling FE, and what I would also have preferred to call FE. Okay. It's just because in the annotation too, you can add a frame element layer, right? Yeah. To annotate from frame elements defined not for the construction, but for a real frame. No, don't think of it that way. If you do that, you have to add the entire set of, uh, of, you have to evoke a target in order to do that in the current desktop. Mm -hmm. You cannot just evoke the frame. You, you have to find a target that is evoking that frame. So there's a real separation. Okay. Um, there are relations in the database between the constructions and the frames. So, for example, there is an age construction in English, things like I am 21, not true, but that's a sentence. Uh, but the, uh, in English, you can say that, just, you know, B followed by number. And you want that to evoke the age frame. We have an age frame, and it, this clearly evokes that. Uh, and in the database, we have it exactly like that. But then... The, frame, the things which are frame elements of the H frame in the frame side, we have labeled 
construction elements on the Constructicon side. Okay? So does that make sense? It's a little bit weird. It's not the way I would have done it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the way we are doing it. Okay. Well, then that's, that's great. That's the reason for the question. Okay. But okay. Uh, I unfortunately seem to have left the uh, dongle in the office. All right. Uh, is, uh, you can go get it? Yeah, where is it? Where it's is it? in the, the desk drawer. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, there will be a slight delay before you have any exciting visuals. Um, so, um, I think I want to give you one example of a construction that does not have a construction evoking element, just so that you're clear on it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's imagine for a moment that we're in a situation where I am a poor man and I'm attempting to compete with somebody who is rich for the heart of a beautiful woman. And in such a situation, I could say, uh, I gave her peanuts and he diamonds. So what that means, you know, if I spell it fully out, then it's, I gave her peanuts and he gave her diamonds, right? So this piece is semantically present for both parts, right? You kind of, so to speak, notionally, it's repeated here in a way, right? Uh, this construction is called gapping. And the thing to note about it is that there's no word of this that evokes the construction, right? It is just the fact that you take the subject and you put it next to the object, which is something we don't do in English except for cases like this construction. Thanks, Tiago. Um, okay, so here you can see that the construction would actually need to include both of these pieces because while this is the piece which is weird, so to speak, this is the piece that tells you how to undo the weirdness. So this is the construct internal part, right? So this is just the, the, the construction phrase type goes here. There is no construction evoking element, but there's a CE here and a CE here. Okay? This would also be a CE. And if I were annotating this uh, in uh, some styles, I would also put CEs for these things, for the contrast elements. But that's actually a separate construction. The thing that you really need from the context is this. Okay? Does that make some, some kind of sense? For everything else, I mean, we're going to specify the phrase type and grammatical function for these things, but that's all stuff that you should already know from the FrameNet side of annotation, right? The construction doesn't just say, I need a construction element, I don't know what kind. You know, we need to say what kind of phrase type each of these things is, because, for example, gapping um, the CE here has to contain a verb. It has to at least be a verb phrase fragment. Okay? All right. We are up and we are up. Good. So, first thing I was going to show you guys <coughs> is that in the, the tool that uh, I'm going to be uh, displaying these things in, uh, everything is marked this way. So that there is a construct which is, has curly braces around whatever chunk is the construct. Uh, there is a curl the angle brackets for construction evoking element. 
square brackets for construction element. And then you have uh, secondary annotation is just the same as the usual web interface for FrameNet. Um, sub, uh, the support, copula, and governor, those are all the same as what you expect from looking at uh, So before we get to the annotation in a lot of detail, I want to show you a really full definition. So this is the way means construction. And you can see some example here. One of the guards elbowed his way through the crowd to the stage. Okay? So at the bottom of the screen, you can see one of the guards elbowed his way through the crowd here. And this is the kind of thing that we're trying to model, right? Here you can see that one of the guards is the, th the theme, because the way construction obligatorily involves motion. Elbowed is the means. His way is the construction evoking element. And here you can actually see that there is a variability because his could be any other pronoun. Uh, through the crowd is a path, and to the stage is a goal. So uh, in this annotation, you can't actually see the uh, limits of the construct. But in the annotation that I'm about to show you, which is using the database directly, it does show that. This is a simplified notation just for the example sentences, just like we do in the FrameNet uh, desktop more generally. OK? So it seems that this is more or less the same as the kinds of definitions we give for frames. The only difference is that we have to give both a form specification and a meaning specification. So. Here you can see this paragraph here is uh, about the meaning. The semantics of this construction is identical to that of the frame of self-motion. And then you see that uh, there are a, there's a lot of detail here about it. Uh, it mentions metaphorical extensions, which we're supposed to do in our frames as well, but we often don't. Um, and here you see that it's giving you the form specification. That you add in a direct object that wasn't supposed to be there, or you replace a direct object that you thought was supposed to be there with the way, with one's way. Okay? Here you can see a ton of examples. Um, possibly too many. Um, but here you can see uh, that we're using the, the notation from before. So the important thing to note here for this construction that you couldn't see before is, for example, in number five, where we have uh, he fought his way towards the granite rock pile. The piece which is considered to be the construct is fought his way. And the reason why is because, as usual, that's the part which is fixed. So when you use this construction, you cannot passivize, you cannot do any of that other stuff that you might otherwise be able to do with something that comes after the verb. You cannot say, his way was fought to the rock pile. OK? So this is the chunk. Uh, the colors indicate which construction element. And you see that, uh, as I was explaining to Tiago, um, we have, for convenience sake, annotated the construct internal elements and the construct external elements the same way. They're all construction elements. As you saw in the definition, we related the construction on the semantic side to self-motion. So we expect that the, construct, the construction elements 
are going to be mostly the same as the frame elements of the self-motion frame. The only exception are these two, the construction, the construction internal elements. Because self-motion does not require that you give a means. It allows you to, but it doesn't require it. And it doesn't have any correspondent to way because that's the construction evoking element, as you can see from the terrible, terrible brackets. These angle brackets are what tell you what the construction evoking element is. Okay? Is this vaguely comprehensible? Um, it is comprehensible. I just don't agree with it. Okay. <laughs> Well, neither do I, so that's hardly surprising. Yeah. Uh, I do think that you will end up missing a lot of important information if you are not able to um, <clears throat> merge the databases in a way that, in the end, and I'm just using um, the report as a metonym for the whole mm -hmm. thing. But in the end, if you just can't see a construction, uh, a frame evoking construction listed together with the lexical units, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And construction internal elements, two frame elements, if there is such a possibility, mm -hmm. then you would be missing lots of generalizations on language and lots of important data in the database, mainly if you think that, in the end, lexico lexicographic annotation is constructional oriented. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we are, are trying to do here, I don't know if we are going to succeed on doing that, mm -hmm. uh, is trying to merge those two databases in the sense that you could... This is only one database. No, okay, yeah, but in the sense not merge the two databases, but... Uh, Make the two data types play nice together. Yes, that's the, the main idea. And yeah. in the end, you could uh, access, because the desktop allows you to access constructional annotation mm -hmm. through the lexicographic annotation. It does. Uh, and so I think that you guys were halfway there. Yeah. In the and sense that it could be... The plain fact of the matter is that we wanted to be able to list constructions as members of frames. Mm -hmm. But we could not figure out a way to do that given the database and software structure that we had mm -hmm. and the amount of money that we had to pay programmers. So it really is just a, in terms of that, it's completely a practical matter. Mm -hmm. So we would prefer to, to list, for example, the age construction, the bare number age construction, we would love to be able to list that in the age frame. It's the obvious thing to do. Uh, but the only way we could do that right now is if there is actually a fixed evoking element. If there is a fixed evoking element, then you can do it. Yeah, but if there's not... specified, so you would yeah. list it among the lexical units. Correct. But it would be some way of forging the the real uh, idea, right? Because you yeah. would uh, create a shortcut to have that kind of sentences available for lexicographic yeah. annotation. And uh, I'll also point out it would be technically possible to uh, have a subcorporation file that has either a variable target marked or no target marked, and then you could import it into the database, and delete the target, and replace it with the construction annotation. Mm -hmm. This would be possible, but we couldn't figure out any way to do it that wasn't a pain in the butt. So um, what we did was introduce what is actually, in some ways, a false dichotomy between lexicographic annotation and construction annotation. But uh, we were helped by the fact that the structure is largely the same. But there were a few things that we needed extra. And we didn't know how to just graft those on to, to the, the lexicographic annotation that we already had. 
Um, I will say that in point of fact, I would consider the construction annotation that we have to basically be the constructicographic um, equivalent of lexicographic um, annotation because in each case we're choosing examples that satisfy the construction and then annotating just from the viewpoint of those. No, I mean the software would let us annotate these in, in full text uh, or in other contexts, or we could put in lexicographic annotation here, but we haven't done that. So it's, it's really just sort of trying to make the dictionary of, uh, of constructions. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. So uh, let me show you the valences that are generated from this. So these, uh, these valences look more or less like lexicographic valences. Here you can see that you have the uh, special construction internal element, the transitive means verb, and it's specified as to what its phrase type is. It's a bare stem in this case, or it's a finite verb, or it's a VPING. Here you see that this is not doing any generalization whatsoever, right? This is doing what we were talking about yesterday. It's really annotating the most specific examples, specifying all of their features, and then the generalization is the job of the analyst. But this is a way to be completely theory neutral about it. So that you just say, look, there's a chunk, it has this phrase type, and nobody's going to be debating too much about that. Um, and it can appear first, or it can appear as the second thing with the theme first, and so on. By the way, um, a pop quiz, is there, can anyone see the error in annotation, which is here, based on what the core frame elements are for self-motion? So what, what would be an erroneous valence for self-motion? Does anybody see a core frame element which is missing in one of the valences? It's kind of hard to see, I guess. But I will point out, I'll bring to your attention, the theme frame element should be there on every line. Theme is a core frame element. It's either realized directly or it could be null instantiated, but either way, there should be something there. On this line, we have constructional null instantiation. On this line, we have nothing. So this is to point out just as usual that FrameNet data is imperfect. If you find something like this, don't think that there's something you don't know about core frame elements. Think instead that sometimes uh, humans make mistakes. I don't know about computers. They're probably perfect, but humans at least. Um, okay, so you can see that other than the, the way expression and the transitive verb, which always appear next to each other, right? I mean, that's one easy generalization you can get from this annotation, that they're always right next to each other in the same sequence. Apart from that, it looks exactly like the valences you would expect from the self-motion frame. You usually have a theme subject, but if not, then that means you have a non-finite verb, and maybe you have constructional non-instantiation, or maybe it's specified in a weird place. Um, and then you have some kinds of path elements after. Here I show you one of my favorite constructions. The stripping construction, I love the name especially. Um, but here you can see um, most wives are too bloody old, let alone mothers. Um, given the bloody, I sort of should have read the whole thing in British accent. Um, so you see that 
This is in the, cons the, in the uh, environment of let alone. But in general, uh, this is not annotating for let alone specifically. This is annotating this part over here. So you see the curly braces? That's the part that tells you which is the construct. So do people understand the sentence? Most wives are too bloody old, let alone mothers. It means most wives are too bloody old, uh, let alone the age of mothers. In other words, uh, in other words, mothers typically are even older than wives. I don't know why someone would say this. I have no idea. But at any rate, that's what they're talking about. Um, and so the idea is that this mothers stands in for a whole idea, a whole sentence. Because let alone connects two ideas in general. But the stripping construction says, well, I know that you're looking for a whole sentence, but actually I'm just going to subtract everything except for some focal element. And so that's why there's an antecedent over here that's marked specifically. And then you have the rest of the phrase that it's supposed to fit into. Okay? And here you see that um, this is the full screen instead of just pieces uh, for the search tool. Here you can see here's the example. Uh, all the other examples would be there. You would scroll up on the same thing in order to see the valences. Here you see the definition. And here you see the list of all the constructions. Okay? Okay. Uh, here's a construction which is particularly confusing to non-native speakers. So we have several different constructions that allow us to use an adjective uh, in place of a noun. At least in Spanish, this construction is super simple. An adjective can be used in the place of a noun. That's all you have to say in Spanish. For English, you have to introduce a whole bunch of extra stuff. So one of them that you should be aware of is that adjectives can stand in for, pe for groups of people. So the poor will always be with us. Uh, you know, um, things like, and her dislike of the insincere ran so deep that she would rather publicly disclaim all grief for her dead husband than be accused of insincerity. Um, a nice literary sentence. Um, but you see that you have the, you have the adjective. The form is exactly the same as the form for the other construction, the adjective as nominal. <clears throat> but in this case, it's singular instead of with plural. In this case, it's an abstract notion rather than people. And so there's actually no ability to merge these two constructions because they don't have the same semantics and they don't have the same syntactic agreement facts. Okay? Just wanted to give you uh, a relatively specific and yet useful bit of uh, English Constructicon. Okay. I think that the couple of pages I have loaded will actually work live. Let's see if that's true. Okay, so here's the, the interface. Um, I don't think I'll be able to bring up other constructions, but I can at least scroll through them. Um, can see that we have a lot of them, and some of them are very, very specific, like deictic day name inverted, which is what lets us say things like Monday next, but doesn't let us say things like Monday this. Um, and that is, should be paired with the deictic day name non-inverted construction. So this Monday, next Monday. 
terribly specific stuff, but it's also sitting right next to things which are very general, like gapping. And so this is really uh, trying to realize the dream of being able to cover any kind of thing. And that's really the goal, is to demonstrate that whether it's really, really specific or really, really general, we can manage to do it. So before we take a break, uh, I want to ask people whether there's anything they want me to bring up on here uh, before we go on, and I should be able to get some internet and try to do that, right? Um, and uh, then when we come back, we're going to discuss uh, what sentences you guys have brought. Okay? So is there anything that uh, you're just dying to see uh, on here uh, before, we, before we move on? Uh, I will point out, just for your utility, that there is also a search function on here. So that if I scroll to the top here, If I click on various uh, elements up at the top, it will take me down to the examples. It will take me down to the examples that uh, have those characteristics. So here you can see that the adjective phrase is sometimes an AJP, sometimes it's a noun phrase. And so I can go to the ones where it's a noun phrase. Okay?